In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than usual. We're going to be repairing this IP camera. And the reason why I'm making this video is because you can apply the same knowledge to the same type of issue on anything else. Now, the issue here is with the power. And it's a very simple issue because basically the barrel connector broke. There's a pin in the middle and that broke off. And now this thing won't get power. So what we're going to do is we are going to bypass this barrel connector. First, we got to talk about the barrel. What is this doing? All it is is connecting basically two things to the board and that's all it's doing so it's connecting five volts in our case and the ground wire which are these two wires right here that are going into this barrel so we're going to end up cutting this off because we're going to completely bypass the barrel connector because i am not going to reorder a new one and i don't have time to desolder this thing so we're just going to bypass it and i'm going to teach you how to figure out how to bypass this so before beginning a word from our sponsor. Huge shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And right now they're running a pretty massive promotion. If you're looking to get your PCBs done, such as for example, my open hardware flight controller or anything else, you can go ahead and check them out. I'll have links to them down below. Not only that, there is also ways to make money with PCBWay currently, which they'll allow you to design your product and even sell on their website, which is very useful, especially for the FPV community. And if you don't have much knowledge into how to get your stuff into the market or designing a website, which is very, very useful. So the first thing we need to do is find the ground. Then we can work our way to the positive on the PCB here. There's many places where we could find that. And I'll show you how to do that with a multimeter. But first, if you have this picture, it's going to be very useful. And what this picture actually tells us is the ground is on the outer side and the positive was the inner pin that broke. So we know that as a start. Now, a way to know this is you need to find a ground pad first. So for example, I know for a fact that the outer casing of an antenna connector is always ground here. So we can use that as reference and I'll explain what I mean in a bit. And we could also find little holes that say GND. And usually these will be on a lot of boards because that's how they would end up programming these. They would have this little machine that goes like this and program this thing to do what it's supposed to do. And in our case, it's right there. Look, you can see where it says GND, which is going to be the third or the second pin from the right right here. So now we know that's ground. So let's go ahead and double check if it's if the ground is connected everywhere. That's very important here. And now we want to go into our multimeter and go into something called the beat mode, also known as continuity. And I still can't pronounce it right. And I get a lot of shit for that. So you want it to do this. Once you touch them, you want the multimeter to beep. All right. So right now what we want to do is you want to find out uh, which is the positive and which is the negative on the barrel connector. And we want to figure out these ones down here, which are these little legs. Each one is going to represent something. I don't know why this one has three, but I know for sure one is going to be a ground and the other one's going to be the five volts here. So it's going to be one of these three right here because this is the barrel connector and that is where it's connected. Now, as we saw earlier over here, we found here's a little ground pad right there. So we can go ahead and touch that one just like this. Just like that. I just put the multimeter in there and it's still in beep mode. And then we could touch or probe each of these legs until one beeps. So now we know this one on the innermost part is ground currently. So that's where we're going to solder um, our first wire. So we can go ahead and solder our first ground here. Or we could just completely ignore that and just solder to this ground right here. Any other ground would work. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just bring in some silicone wire, some really small silicone wire, and we're going to connect the ground here. However, the little bit harder part would be the five volts, which is the power. So how are we going to find it? Now on the picture, we saw that the pin was five volts. So the pin is five volts and the pin has broken off. Now, if you're able to touch the pin or probably even see it, it's going to be really, really hard to actually see anything. But there's a little piece of metal that's just left over inside there. Um, it's going to be right in there. Now, there's also another connection on the left here, which we don't want to touch. But we also see another 5 volt really close by right here. And usually they leave these holes in order to help them quickly make sure the device is working without having to constantly keep plugging stuff in. So if they have an automated system, if the device is really advanced in a way. So here we have the 5 volts as well. And if we touch on the inside part where the pin used to be, hopefully we get a little beep. So let's go ahead and check that out. So it's very difficult to see, but there's a little piece hanging right there. And as you can tell, it is beeping with the five volts. So that is a direct connection going to this right here. So now what we can do is keep holding this one, which is this pad right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it and I'm going to figure out which one of these legs is the five volt. So it's going to be the middle one. So we have 
the innermost one is going to be ground and this is going to be 5 volt. Now as you can tell the 5 volt here is also routed to a diode so this way it'll help you protect if you accidentally put the wrong uh, adapter in which had the power inverted the power wouldn't go through and fry the rest of your components it's kind of like a small security or safety check in order not to burn it but yeah that's why they've done that so we don't want to bypass the diode here so i think we're going to solder our positive right on where the 5 volt should be so right now i'm just going to solder a ground and a 5 volt there and then later on we're going to figure out which wire is the positive and which wire is the negative that's coming in from the adapter itself here so the first thing I want to do is just want to add a bunch of solder to the soldering iron tip before I begin here and make sure it's heated up correctly and then just clean it up slightly. Now if you have this much water on your sponge that's a bit too much right now but what you want to do is you want it to look this shiny. You want it to look brand new really nice and clean because it'll make the heat transfer so much easier and the soldering so much easier. Now what we have here is we said we needed the innermost one was going to be ground. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to this, just like that. And my temperature is on 366 degrees Celsius right now. So there we go. Just add a little bit of solder here, a little bit of solder there. And that should be good. Make sure nothing touches. I'm going to get a closer look here. So I've added just a little bit of solder on the edges. Uh, it's a little bit difficult with the camera here, but um, I'm doing my best to my abilities because everything is kind of far away. So I'm just adding as much as I can here and as much as I can here. So the first thing I want to actually start soldering is going to be the 5 volt, which is in the middle because the ground is going to be much easier for me to solder. So I'm going to go ahead and strip some silicone wire here. I'm going to twist it. Now the twisting is very important. Make sure you twist it really good because you don't want any strands to stick out or else you'll fry the whole thing. And I'm going to have my solder just levitate in the air like that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hold the soldering iron to the wire and move down on the solder to apply the solder. Just like that. It shouldn't take a lot of time. Make sure you don't flick this, especially when the board's near you. So you just let it flick like that because it'll just flick solder everywhere and you could ruin your board without even knowing that. And now I'm going to go ahead and trim it as small as possible, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, solder it right into place right there. So this, is, this might be a little bit difficult. Now, if you can't do this, if this is too hard for you, then I'd highly recommend you can just go directly to the 5-volt pad that we saw there. But however, if we do that, we're going to bypass this diode. And I think we can also solder to this diode, but we're not going to cover the diode part. And the way you know if you could solder to that diode is if you just uh, go ahead and, and use continuity again like we did the first time to find the ground. So what I found out to be is my wire is a bit too thick, so I'm not going to be soldering it to this. And I actually found out it might be very difficult for a lot of other people. But what you can do is find the components close by most of the time. For example, we're going to check that diode. We're going to go into beep mode again just to double check if there's a connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to touch that 5 volt pad, which is that one. And we're going to touch this diode. And as we can see, we can also see the traces that it's making a direct connection. So it's coming from here straight to this diode. So I'm going to put my 5 volt right there. It's kind of the same thing that's going on here. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm also going to double check if I have anything bridged here. You want to make sure none of these pads are bridged together or else, again, you'll fry the whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and apply a little bit of solder to the diode, which I've already done right now. And we are just going to go ahead and solder directly to this guy. Just like that. There we go. So now our 5 volts is set up. So now all we need is ground. And we could install the ground anywhere. I think I'm going to take it from these right here. And we can see that this was the ground right there. And you could again use the side that you found to be ground, which would be the edge right here. But I kind of really don't want to go that close and keep that area very dirty. So I'm just going to go to the ground right here, which is GND right there. So it's the second one. Uh, it would be the second one up right there. So it's the second one down this way. It will be the second one up right here. So I'm just going to add a bit of solder right on that pad, which is this one right here. Now the ground pads always usually take quite some time to stick to because the ground is all over the board. So it dissipates the heat. So if you want a really good connection, you want to kind of keep your soldering iron there for quite some time. Don't worry about burning anything. And then we're going to go ahead and set this up just like so. So now we've given the board ground as well as 5 volts here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure these two are not touching. So the way we can do that is we can touch any 5 volt in any ground pad with our multimeter. And if it beeps, 
then there is some sort of a bridge which has to be uh, fixed before connecting power to this or else you'll fry the board. All right, now what we can do is touch both wires and if we do get a beep, then we have a short circuit somewhere which has to be solved. And as you can tell, we get no beeps. And if we touch the positive and negative again that we're on the barrel connector, we can go ahead and check that. Now the, that little beep that we just heard is basically a capacitor uh, that was go ahead that was charged right now and that's what we got those beeps. Uh, but as you can tell right now we're totally fine. So once we've checked that the next thing is we need to go ahead and grab our adapter that was being used. For example it's going to be this one here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it just right about here. Keep some of this extra space because maybe later on I will purchase a barrel connector but I highly doubt it. So we're going to go ahead and just cut this wire and we are going to strip it. Uh, try to keep it as far as possible. Not all wires will tell you which one is the ground. For example, this one, uh, theoretically, this should be the ground, but we're also going to double check that, and I'll show you how to figure that out with a multimeter right now. So now what we can do is we can grab, for example, this was the marked line. So we want to see if it's actually ground or it could be 5 volts. So we're going to touch the multimeter to the that wire, and then we're going to come and just touch the barrel. Now, if the outer part of the barrel didn't beep, then that's not ground because the outer part of the barrel was the ground and so the marked wire is actually the 5 volt and that should be the ground. So if we actually just stick this one right in here, just like that, and then we actually touch the outer part, then we see that um, the other wire was the uh, ground and it wasn't the one that's marked. So another way you could figure out which which wire is positive and which wire is negative Especially if they weren't color-coded is we would go ahead and strip the wires and install them on a multimeter like so and go to the voltage settings and How would you know which one's positive and which one's negative? Well right now if we plug this in and we get a negative 5 volts It'll actually tell you a minus then we know it's going to be the opposite. And if we get a normal 5 volts, then we know it's correct that the red wire, the red probe here is the positive and the black probe here is the ground. And again, if it's a negative, then it's the other way around. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. So right now I've plugged in the power and we see we're getting negative 5 volts. So what that means is that the black wire here, the black probe is actually the 5 volts and the red probe is the ground. So it's inverted. So this wire is going to be ground and this wire is going to be 5 volts. Now if we didn't have this negative, then it would be that this is 5 volts and this would be ground. But since it's negative, that means it's inverted. We're taking the measurements invertedly. So the wire here with the marking is going to be the 5 volt wire. So let's go ahead and disconnect that from the power. All right, so the next thing I want to do is actually want to grab some heat shrink because this is just going to make it overall a bit cleaner. I'm just going to add some heat shrink so we can put around it once we finish soldering them into place. So we said that the marked wire was the 5 volt, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my 5 volt wire here. And I'm just going to twist them together, and then we're going to apply some solder to these. And the other wire that didn't have a marking was going to be the ground wire here. So I'm just going to make this a little bit longer. So now we can start adding solder to these. Now what I like to do is keep the solder levitated just like this and just come in with the soldering iron while holding the wire and just guiding it towards the solder and that should give you a really easy way to actually solder the wire since they're held together very nicely here. So just make sure we have enough solder everywhere so this won't be ripping off anytime soon. All right, and that is currently finished and this is the reason why we brought the heat shrinks also just to cover these up just like that. Okay, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and connect everything to how it was and hopefully it should work. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and hopefully we don't get a short circuit. It just made a noise. I can see the LEDs powering up. It should start moving now to understand where its current position is unless when, with that fall it kind of broke the motors. So let's just give it a moment. Okay, we see that the LED light just went on and now it hopefully should start moving. There we go. So we see we just fixed this camera, which is really, really great. It's not in the best of conditions right now, but it's just gonna do the job just fine right now. And like this, we've successfully fixed the camera, which is really great. And I'm going to leave it at that, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's something a little different than usual, but hopefully someone found it useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.